Cutting sugar can be hard, and that's why one of my favorite things is showing you that it doesn't have to be. Take this caramel sauce, for example. It's sweet, it's gooey, it's golden, and it's keto-friendly and sugar-free. Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. So today I'm showing you how to make sugar-free caramel sauce. You can use this in all the same ways you'd use regular caramel. I'll tell you about some of my favorite ways at the end of the video. And it's just as easy to make as the regular kind. Let's do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is melt butter and sweetener in a saucepan over low heat. So you're going to need one third of a cup of butter. That is about a little bit more than five tablespoons. And you can see there's these notches on the butter that show you the tablespoon. So I'll just count one, two, three, four, five, and then go a little bit past that. And go ahead and add that to the saucepan. I actually like to wait to turn on the heat until I've added everything because this does go pretty quickly. And you'll need three tablespoons of Bestie Brown Monk Fruit Allulose Blend. Now you do have a couple choices for sweeteners. I like to use this brown sweetener because it gives a little bit of that brown sugar flavor, which I think is delicious. But you can also use the powdered version that will work just as well. The nice thing with both of these is they dissolve really well and they don't crystallize is the main difference between Bestie and other sugar substitutes you could use. A lot of them will not dissolve as well or they'll have a gritty texture after they crystallize, so I highly recommend using one of these. So I've gone ahead and turned on the heat here. Make sure it's on low because we don't want to burn this and just wait for the butter to melt. Give it an occasional stir as the butter is melting to help the sweetener dissolve in there, but you can see this happens pretty easily. You can break it up with your wooden spoon as well to make it go faster. So once the butter melts, I'm going to let this cook for about three to four more minutes. If you're using a powdered sweetener, your doneness indicator is when it starts to turn golden. You can't really use that with the brown sweetener since it's already brown anyway, but just a few minutes should be a good amount. And give it a stir occasionally. You don't have to stir it all the time, but every once in a while. Now this has cooked for a couple minutes. It's still not fully dissolved, which is perfectly normal. I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of heavy cream. And if you like, you can also substitute coconut cream if you want to reduce the dairy a bit. The butter in there is still needed, but it would be less dairy that way. And I am going to increase the heat and bring this to a boil. Once this is boiling, I'm gonna reduce the heat a bit to a simmer. So there's still bubbles, but not huge ones. And then let this cook, stirring occasionally for about seven to 10 minutes. Whoa, be careful with big bubbles. So the time this takes to thicken and caramelize is going to vary quite a bit depending on the pan you use. It'll be influenced by the color of your pan, by the size of your pan. If you want this to go faster, you can even use a large skillet or a saute pan, but just kind of keep an eye on it. Make sure it's simmering, but not heavily boiling. And it'll be light brown like this at first, and you're looking for it to turn a dark golden caramel color. You can see this is starting to turn a little more golden, but not quite dark enough yet. I really like this pan because it has rounded edges at the bottom, so you can get any caramelized pieces from the bottom. That way you don't end up with chunks in your caramel. So this here is the perfect amount of bubbles that you're looking for as this is cooking. So this is what it's going to look like when it's done. You'll have a lot of bubbles, but they will settle once you turn off the heat. One more test just to confirm that this is the right consistency, because it's a little hard to tell with the wooden spatula, is I like to use a spoon, dip it in there, and check that it coats the back. The caramel is still pretty thin at this point, but it will thicken as it cools, so we don't want to cook it for much longer, otherwise it's just going to get hard and be difficult to pour. The last step after you remove from heat is adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And just stir that in there. My keto caramel sauce is ready, and I promised I'd tell you about some ways that I like to use it. Some of my favorite ways are to drizzle it over sugar-free cheesecake, over keto apple pie, or over sugar-free whipped cream on warm drinks. You can also use it as part of the filling for keto pecan pie. I have a video for that that I'll link down below for you. But my absolute favorite way to use this caramel is on sugar-free ice cream. So that is what I'm going to do right now. Hmm, that was just like regular caramel. Let me know what you think if you try this. And don't miss the video for the sugar-free ice cream recipe here.